All right, so this is part two of our creating your own dynamic EQ inside of Bitwig Studio. And in this part, we're gonna try to move away from the sort of and move more into the what actually is. So what is a dynamic EQ? What is it doing? And why might you need to use it? So I've gone ahead and just set up a basic example for us here. I'm gonna go through it quickly. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. So. What we have right now is what we were doing in part one, okay? We're listening to the input signal, which in this case is this drum loop, and we have our EQ. So let's listen to this drum loop. And the biggest problem with this particular loop is that there's like a resonant frequency and it happens to be around 7.18. You could find it very easily by doing a frequency sweep. And when you were to do that frequency sweep, you would hear this. Okay, so clearly we don't want that in there. So how would we go about removing that? The first thing you would probably do is just drop an EQ on there and kind of pull it out. The problem in this example is that we have an entire drum loop. We can't just isolate that individual sound and pull it out from there. Because if we could do that, it would probably work. But what if that frequency is really integral to the kick? Or what if it's really integral to the snare or another element? And by pulling this out, we might actually cause some other problems. And if I do pull this out by a lot, Well, in this case, it kind of works quite well, but let's just for the sake of example say that it didn't work well at all. And we also uh, don't necessarily want this to be static. We want it to move along with the music. And that's a very, that's why people use compressors, right? I mean, it's a great way to add some movement, make those speakers snap a little bit more, add some excitement to your listening and mixing life, which, hey, you know, if it's not exciting, why are you doing it? So we have this set up here and I've already set the modulation up. I have it going full blown there. And I'm just gonna increase the depth here and let's try to pull this out in time with the music. I might even just take out a little bit anyway, just as like a 0.5 or something, a little bit of just static EQ pulling it out. But Okay, so I want you to think about why does this work and why might it not be the most effective strategy? Okay, thinking time over. Why this actually works, and the truth is you could actually set a lot of frequencies and this would still work, is that we're adding separation. So we're separating the kick from this frequency. And since this frequency isn't super important to the kick drum, you know, it's gonna make people happy. You're gonna hear the kick clearer. And actually the nice thing about this is the release time is long enough where we're also getting the front end of that open hat. So that really annoying frequency that comes right at the transient point of that, we're pulling back on that a little bit. And so that's definitely a good thing. Now, it's amazing if we pull back on the release too far, it will start to sneak its way back in there. So you always have to do a lot of finessing to get this right. Now, the reason why this may not work and the reason why we'd wanna use a real dynamic EQ is because the audio mod is currently listening to everything, okay? And what is driving the audio mod? What's driving the audio mod is the kick and the snare, the most powerful part of the drum loop. And you can see that this is bouncing along with the kick. And you know, that's fine and it works, but in every situation, this won't work because the actual frequency that you might want to pull out may have nothing to do with the kick drum at all and might be very much an isolated frequency. And if that's the case, you need to pull for an actual dynamic EQ because what an actual dynamic EQ does is 
it hones in on that frequency. So it's a lot like a multi-band compressor. And you might be asking, well, why not use a multi-band compressor? The reason I wouldn't use a multi-band compressor in this case is because I don't have any multi-band compressors uh, with the exception of maybe like a really good de that's going to be able to only listen to a very, very particular frequency. With the EQ, we can set that right up. You know, we can really increase on that uh, bell bandwidth and we can really hone in on what we want to pull out. With a multi-band, it could be a little bit more difficult. And specifically with Bitwig Studio, if you try to use the multi-band FX3 and, and really limit this range here for the mid-band, You'll hear how it actually takes away a lot from the signal itself and that's just because it's not meant to I, I don't think it's meant to be set up where you're creating a really small mid band you're having problems with crossover frequencies and you're getting phase issues and all of this so really our only option is to use a dynamic eq and like i mentioned with the dynamic eq what we're doing is we're actually setting up based on the bands we set little tiny little like listening zones that is determining when to pull the sound out so without this little band that we're going to create what's driving the entire device is the kick drum now what i can do since we don't have a little audition here is i can add a filter in and i can go to that 718 And so now we can hear that basically this is what the audio mod is listening to. Now, of course, we're not able to audition it, but just so you guys realize that without this filter in, this is what's listening to. Without the filter in here, it's listening to everything. With the filter in, it's now listening to, and so that that's what's going to drive this thing not necessarily the kick drum now because the kick drum has like usually a transient that is in this general vicinity it might still trigger right it might still trigger but it's much easier to get the exact result that you're looking for so now if i increase the depth here and i also want you to notice a couple of things my depth is at 0.63 my mod is at minus 27.6, okay? And we're getting this much. So you can see the amount of gain reduction we're getting there. Uh, maybe gain reduction isn't technically the right term, but I'm not sure what would be the right term here. Now, if we go over to our first example, we have the depth up 100%. We've modulated all the way down and we have a pretty steep curve. And so what this means is that this is just not working as efficiently and you want all of your audio processors to work as efficiently as possible. So here's what we've got. Let's try to really hone this in. And I should be able to get away with a much faster release time because what I'm really trying to cut down on is where that transient's occurring. And now to me, it looks like when I'm hearing that annoying frequency, that's when I'm at the maximum, which was different as compared to the first example where when the kick drum was in with the full energy, that's when we were seeing the dip at its, at its most extreme. And then we can actually increase the output gain here, almost like we're working with a compressor.
and voila, we have our problem solved for us right there. The second example I'm going to show you is more of a mastering application of this, and it's going to follow the exact same principle of what we just did there, okay? Only it's going to be a little bit more subtle, and I'm going to use a plugin just so you can see that you can do this with a plugin as well. Now, it's kind of tricky to get a plugin that's going to work really well with this, but hey, you got to just kind of experiment and see. So here's the loop we've got going, another one of these generic ones. Okay, so that's a bit muddy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a linear phase EQ plugin. Uh, basically, the reason I'm using this linear phase EQ is because I, at this point, if I was in the mastering stage, I'm not trying to add vibe anymore. And a linear phase is incredibly clean. It's incredibly transparent. And so I don't want something that's super noticeable. I want it transparent, but I want to fix the problems that I'm hearing. Okay, so... Okay, so I have an idea for what I want to do here. I really want to pull out from this 200 hertz, but I also want to pull out a little bit from 317, a little bit from 126, and I'm going to try to emphasize the sub energy a bit more. So let's see if we can make that work with our dynamic EQ. So this is just kind of giving us an example of what we're trying to accomplish. So uh, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add two audio mods. And I'm going to set them both up to filter particular ranges. So in this case, this will be our sub one, which I think was at 31.7. This is going to be the one I gain on. And then I'm going to create another one, only I want this frequency to be at 200. Okay, so let's put that in exact. And now I'm going to add my two EQs. And let's get to work. The first thing I would probably do is just take out a little bit of 200. Cool. So I'm going to try to emphasize the sub energy a bit. Now let's try to clean up this mud. <laughs> <laughs> 